Hey, this is Eric. I'm going to talk about OpenRefine for a few minutes. This should be a pretty quick episode. So um, OpenRefine is available at OpenRefine.org. It used to be called Google Refine, um, but it was since open sourced and is now run as an open source project. Um, yeah, so you download it, and when you run it, it actually opens in your browser, even though it's running on your computer. So you can see in the address bar that that is not a website that's actually referring to your computer. Um, <clears throat> so one really nice thing about Google Refine, Open Refine, that I'm going to talk about right now, is that it makes it easy to read data in formats that you're maybe not used to reading. <clears throat> And this will come up sometimes when you're trying to use data from other sites that um, don't provide an API or don't provide data downloads. Um, I'll show you a couple of examples of this. 596 acres, even though here under the map it has ways to download uh, the data, if you, um, if you open developer tools, and go to the network tab and reload the page. Um, remember, you'll see everything that the browser loads in relation to the page show up here. It can be a lot to sift through, but um, any data that is showing up on the page is going to be coming through this network tab. Um, but uh, it's not just data, of course. There's There are CSS files, there are images, and when you have maps, you'll often have a lot of tile images, and it can be a lot to look through. So what I usually do when I'm trying to find data is here. Let me make the not that. Let me make the dev tools bigger. Okay, that might be better better to see. Um, so there's this filter button, and I go to XHR, and that is basically, that's what um, any requests that you make through JavaScript for other data outside of the site goes under XHR. And when we change it to filter by XHR, we see there are far fewer items that were loaded. And in this case, um, let's see, we have the counts, and since I made the site, I know that the counts are the numbers that update these parentheses here. So if we click on this, we can see uh, there are some technical things in here, but really what you want to see is the preview tab, and under the preview you can see all of the numbers that it loads every time. And also, so the more interesting thing here is the GeoJSON. And this actually contains all of the features that are on the map. And you can look through each individual one here and dig through it. Remember, under the Preview tab. Okay. So, so that's one example of finding data that a site is using. I'm going to close that tab. This is an example that somebody brought to me from class. They, there isn't necessarily an obvious way to download these markers, but they wanted these markers. And by opening up DevTools and refreshing the page and going to the Network tab, remember, there's so much here to sift through. It's really difficult. What you want to do is filter and go to XHR. Okay, now there are far fewer, right? And I believe we want the biggest one that says markers.json. Um, sometimes you just have to kind of dig through these and see what is actually useful. And we go to the preview tab. And when we do that, we see that there are these markers. And within them, so this is the first marker you see that it has an ID, a latitude, a longitude, and a name. So that looks really promising. And there are 28 of them 
which, um, if we zoom back out, 28 sounds about right, looking at this map. So, so I think this is what we want. And the only problem with this is if you look under the response tab, which is kind of just the pure text that was returned by the server, it's big and it's kind of, it's not something you can open in Excel. It's not something you can upload to CardoDB because, um, because it's not in a standard format. It's not GeoJSON. It's just kind of, um, it's just JSON, which means that the geometries aren't defined in a standard way. They're defined in a way that makes sense for this website, but that doesn't necessarily work across the board. So that's where Google Refine slash Open Refine come in handy. What I'm going to do is select this whole response and copy it. So I just copied it. And over in my Open Refine window, I'm going to select clipboard and just paste the response in. You can see the whole response there. I'm going to go to the next. Okay, so let me make this slightly larger. All right, so we have an instruction here that says click on the first JSON node corresponding to the first record to load. So the records we want are the markers, and this is the first whole one. We don't want just the ID or just the name. We don't want um, to start with the second one. We want to start with this one. And when we select this, OpenRefine is going to use the format of this one to determine the format of the rest of them. Um, so I'm going to click it. And you see that really quickly it turns the whole thing into a table. OK. So I'm going to create a project and say uh, video habitat map. And when you create a project, then you can actually work with the data. And by default, you only see 10 rows at a time, but you can make that larger. There are only 28 markers. Um, from here in Refine, you can delete columns and things like that. Um, so like this one is 1,035 every time. I'm just going to remove that. This one has a weird name. <clears throat> So I'm going to change that. Um, it's it's fairly straightforward in that way. Refine can do a lot more than this. It can help you make your data better and help you understand the kind of the texture of your data and how, for instance, if there was a borough column, you could really quickly see how many of these treatment plants are in each borough for example. So that's all I'm going to do for now. Um, I guess I'll rename these really quickly. Edit column, rename this column. Okay. So then um, if you're done with it here, and I am, I'm going to click export and download it as a CSV. And then I'll open this in my Office program. It should work just fine in Excel also. Um, but I'm not recording that part of my screen, so you're not going to be able to see it. But trust me that um, this is, it, it gives you spreadsheets that you can download. And then this would be really easy to throw into something like CardoDB because it should recognize these lat and long columns. You might have to rename them to actually latitude and longitude, but either way, it's going to work out for you. Um, so I hope that's a reasonable introduction to finding data where you maybe don't expect it. Remember, by looking through the network tab 
and developer tools and filtering down to XHR and then looking through these to see these resp these requests to see which ones are likely to have the data that you want. And then um, if they're in a format that you can't use, maybe try to upload them into OpenRefine and see what happens. Okay, that's all.